Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to make this little roux from Winnie the Pooh. Let's jump right into this. So this is the color I used. It's a worsted. It's from Craftsmart. And the color is curry. I have a hard time saying that word. Um, and then I used this blue for his shirt. It's from the same make but I don't have the thing saying what color this is so but um, you can look at a picture and see if you can't match the color for his shirt so uh, they're both worsted I'm gonna use a 4.5 because these call for oh, I don't have it on this tag um, it's either a five or a f I think these call for a 5.5, but because we're going to build this in amigurumi, we're going to go down a size so it's nice and tight. So let's get started. Uh, arms and legs get made separately and they're sewn to the body. We're not crocheting them to the body. And you're going to need a stitch marker as well for this project because it's amigurumi. There's no slip stitching. There's no chaining two. Arms, legs, tail, and ears are all built separately. So we're going to build the body. And then the head. Oh, and the muzzle separately. And then the muzzle, ears, arms, and legs, and tail is all separate and sewn on. So let's do the body first. We're going to start from the head down just because that will be visible so you kind of want that to, to look good. So we're going to start with magic ring and six single crochets. Your next round is going to be two single crochets in each stitch. You're not going to slip stitch. You're not going to chain two. You're going to go right into that next stitch and make a stitch. So your marker goes in your first stitch, not your second one. And then I want you to put number two stitch in that same space. And I want you to put two single crochets in each stitch all the way around. So you should have a total of 12 when you're done. Your next round is going to be one single crochets and an increase. So do your one single crochet and put your marker in. The next stitch gets the increase of two single crochets in the same space. And then you repeat one single crochet, two single crochets. This will give you 18 stitches. Your next round is going to be two single crochets and an increase. That's number one. That's number two single crochets and then your increase of two single crochets in the same space. This will give you a total of 24 stitches. Your next round is going to be three single crochets and an increase. That's three single crochets and then your increase of two single crochets in the same space. If mine can into that space. This will give you 30 stitches and then I want you to do five rows of one single crochet in each of these 30 stitches. And I will see you on the other side. So 
So this is what you should have. That's my five rows done. So we're going to start decreasing. Oh, actually, let's put the eyes on first. So let me see. One, two, three, four. Between the fourth and fifth row is where I put my eyes. One, two, three, four. Yeah, there's four I can visibly see in between. So let's get that out of the way before we forget about it. So I always leave my thing at the back, and so I'm going to put my in the front here. All right, let's move on. That took way too much time. We're gonna start decreasing. So let's do um, a three single crochet decrease because we did a, we left off with a three single crochet increase. So that's number one, that's two, and that's three. Uh, you can do a regular decrease or you can do an invisible one which people seem to be asking me about so um, there are different ways to do an invisible decrease depending on the project that you're doing for something like this I would do just a regular decrease but in the front loops only so go into the front loop pull up a loop go into the second front loop and pull up a loop and then yarn over and pull through all three now there is a different way to do an invisible decrease, but like I said, all depending on the project. This one, just so there isn't, I mean you want it to be invisible, right? So you don't want to see the big bump. Or you can just do a regular one, which is just the exact same thing, but going into the whole entire stitch. I'm going to do the invisible one for this project, because it couldn't hurt and I've already done one so <laughs> anyway I digress this should bring you down to 24 stitches since we were at 30 so we're going to decrease by six like we increased by six and that was because I did a magic ring with six so that's how the, all that works but only if you do two single crochets in each stitch around after So I keep my decrease, my invisible decrease, pretty loosey-goosey. I try not to pull tight. So your next decrease is going to be two single crochets and a decrease. That's number one. That's number two. And then a decrease. Brings you down to 18 stitches. So it's always good to do that your invisible decreases when you're layering your decreases like this, or not layering, but like one after another, because you will end up with big holes if. If you do a regular decrease, you can end up with some bigger holes that you don't want there. If you can see stuffing through and stuff like that. So amigurumi is supposed to be nice and tight. So You can start stuffing this at any time, but we are building a body onto this. So it doesn't really matter. Your next round is going to be one single crochet and decrease. I'm going to put a little bit of stuffing in mine. That's my one single crochet. So he's just a tiny little guy. He's um 
a little smaller than what I'm used to making. I usually make way bigger stuff, but Rue is a tiny little, tiny little uh, kangaroo, so. Well, a tiny little Rue. <laughs> so, uh, I didn't want to go too big with him. So just be careful on how you stuff him because he's he's really not meant to be big at all. He's just a little Rue. And if you're not sure of what I'm talking about, um, other than being Rue from Winnie the Pooh, that is what you call a baby kangaroo, is a Rue. So, a little bit of stuffing in his head. Trying to make it nice and round. So I already did my one. I'm not sure how that got all jacked up. So that is my one single crochet I already did. So I'm going to go right into my decrease. decreases nice and loose So there we have his head done. The next round is going to be one single crochet. So that's going to kind of act like his little neck part. And then we're going to switch to blue for his shirt. So you can do a color change any way you want to. Me personally, I like to weave in my blue before I need to use it. Number one, it's just added security. And number two, um, it just, it's a much cleaner look. When I come back around and I need to all of a sudden be using blue, it's just a cleaner look for me. That's my personal preference. So this round is not using the blue. This round is still using the curry color, or whatever color you're using for Rue. And it's just going to be one single crochet in each stitch. You should have 12 stitches. So that's 12. Difficult and awkward. The very last stitch I'm going to come in and pull up a loop. But I'm going to finish the stitch with my blue. Because I know that I'm going to blue. So your next round with blue is going to be one single crochet and an increase. So now I'm going to weave my curry in a bit. Um, I am going back to it. So, um, so I am going to weave my, um, just to keep it tight, I'm going to weave my curry in this first stitch. I don't really need a stitch marker because I have a different color. And then I'm just going to let it hang there because I am not, I'm going to be going back to it. I just need to use the blue for a bit for his shirt. So I'm just going to let that hang there if you're not comfortable with it because things are going to get all bunched up you can cut it off and then reattach later so uh, I'm going to do a one single crochet increase I have my one single crochet the next stitch gets the increase of two single crochets in the same space and repeat 
So I'm increasing for his body at this point. So your next round is going to be two single crochets and an increase. That's number one. Two single crochets and then the next stitch gets the increase of two single crochets in the same space. So it is going to get a little squishy. So your next round is going to be three single crochets and an increase. And this will bring you up to 30 stitches. And then I want you to do three rows of one single crochet in each of those 30 stitches. And I will see you on the other side. So that is my three rows done. This is what you should have. So we got still got to keep increasing because he's a little too small still. So we're going to do a four single crochet increase. That's number one. Four single crochets and then your increase of two single crochets in the same space. This will bring you up to 36 stitches. So your next round is going to be five single crochets and an increase and that will bring you up to 42 stitches. And then I want you to do one single crochet in each of those 42 stitches. And then we're going to switch back to the brown. That's five single crochets. And then your increase of two single crochets in the same space. So I've done my one single crochet um, in each stitch around. I already have my brown still attached, but if you cut it off and need to reattach, then I would probably halfway around start weaving it in. Uh, anyway, so I've got my last stitch. So I'm going to come in. I'm going to pull up a loop, but I'm going to finish that. I'm going to finish it with my brown, and I'm going to weave in this blue for a little bit because I'm going to cut it off and I'm not going back to it. For the next round, I want you to put one single crochet in the back loops only. So these here are your back loops. So it's not like you have to roll this over to try to find them. They're right in front of you. I need the front loops to do the bottom of his shirt later. And that's why we're using the back loops only. So it may seem like a big deal. Um, however, I use the front loops to put that on the bottom of his shirt to make it look like an actual shirt and not just somebody, some color change, you know what I mean? So that is why we're doing the back loops only. If you don't care to put that thing on the bottom, you don't need to do back loops only, but I think it looks better. So you're just doing one single crochet all the way around for 42 stitches in the back loops only. And then we're going to start decreasing.
And don't worry about this look. It looks like it's getting all stretched out of shape. It will go back into shape. So don't worry about stretching it. Plus, we're going to put that big thing on there, so, you know, on the bottom of the shirt, so you won't even notice it. So I'm a little bit ways around. I'm going to cut my blue off. So I am back around. I'm going to start decreasing in this next row. We're going to use the whole stitch. So we're going to do five single crochets and a decrease. This is number one. And it's only because we went up to five single crochet increase. So that's number one. That's five single crochets, and then I'm still doing my invisible decreases. So your next round is going to be four single crochets and a decrease. This brings you down to 30 stitches. That's number one. That's four single crochets and then your decrease. Your next round is going to be three single crochets and a decrease. brings you down to 24 stitches. That's number one. That's three single crochets and then your decrease. Your next round is going to be two single crochets and a decrease. You can start stuffing this at any time. Because we're going to be closing up to bottom soon. So that's number one. That's number two. And then your decrease, however you want to do it. You don't need to do the invisible one. This brings you down to 18 stitches. So when we sew his arms on, they're going to be right out at the neck area. Your next decrease, your last decrease, is going to be one single crochet and a decrease. So that's one single crochet. And then your decrease. You're right on the bottom. I wouldn't really worry about whether it's invisible or not, but that's just me personally. Of course, I'm still doing invisible stitches. Just because I did it the whole way. To me, it, it's not a struggle. It doesn't really matter, so... So this will bring you down to 12 stitches, which is manageable for a cinch. So 
So, I'm passing off. That is it. We're going to cinch the rest shut. We need to finish. We just need enough to cinch and weave. So not a whole lot, but we do need to fill the bottom. Pour a head out of shape. So once you think you have enough in there, you don't want it too bulbous on the bottom because we're putting sewing his legs on there. But so you can just go into the front loops and out the front loops. So like just like that. I know it might be hard to see because my needle, my needle color. Is so close to this color. So in and out of the front loops, just just to be able to cinch it. So when you come back around, you're just gonna pull, pull that closed. So you want to secure your cinch. So just come across to the other side go through the loop pull back and forth and it'll tighten that knot right down and then you can just go in and weave a couple of times but when you pull you'll be able to pull that knot right down so that's what your bottom should look like a little bit of a bump there but I think that's just because I stopped putting stuffing in it I can pull that down I just gotta snug that up and it takes my bump right away. So I'll just weave a couple of times. So with weaving you just go in as close as you can to your lead so that when you pull this is just gonna look like a stitch and you won't be able to tell that you weaved and go in multiple directions. There we have it. So before we start our arms in that, let's do the bottom of um, his shirt. I did a reversed, a reverse slip stitch, and that's going to give this braided look all the way around. Well, it's not quite a braided look, but it's not hard if you if you just did it but a lot of people are scared of it but it's not hard so make your slip knot put it on your hook let's start at the back where we have this stupid jog we're not gonna be able to get rid of that but when you're done and the tails on it's not super duper noticeable if that helps if I can just keep my camera running long enough so we left these front loops open. We did back loops here, so I just want you to pick up that loop right there. Sorry, we're going backwards, so go to the top of this jog because we're, we're working this way around. We're not working the normal direction, we're going backwards. So go to the top of the jog into this first loop. So what you're going to do is, all this stuff is going to get in the way for your first stitch. You're going to pull through the loop and then pull through what was on your hook. So that's the first stitch to secure it. You're not going to put another stitch in there. We're going to turn our hook in this direction and we're going to go to the next front loop and we're gonna go into it like that. Then we're gonna grab our yarn. We do this on camera. Grab our yarn and pull through. Now you can turn this, I usually turn it. I turn my, grab my yarn and I pull through doing a slip stitch. Just like that. And then you go to your next loop pick up your next loop 
Sorry, I'm probably moving this around too much. Grab your yarn and pull through, doing a slip stitch. Grab your next loop. Turn this around, grab your yarn, and do a slip stitch. I'm trying so hard to stay on camera. So grab your yarn. I grab it like this. So I just grab it like I normally would, and I pull down. The only reason I want you to turn your hook this way is because it's just easier to get into the front loop if you do. Sorry, I'm probably too close. It's blurry. It's easier to get into the front loop if you turn your hook that way. And then you can go back, you can go back to normal, grab your yarn the normal way and pull through doing a slip stitch. So this is called a reverse slip stitch. And it gives such a nice look to the front. Now if you did my um, uh, wings with me on my um, oh, what's the dragon's name? Oh my god. On my toothless, if you did the wings with me on my toothless, then you'll be familiar with the reverse slip stitch, but that's the look it gives you, so... Um, if you, if it's easier for you to do it another way, to get the same look, then knock your socks off. This is the way I do it. And because I, I've done it quite a bit, it's not difficult for me, but it is a stitch that you kind of got to work at practicing. It's not a stitch that comes easy. And if you want this to be bigger, if you want a wider bottom, um, you can do um, a reverse um, single crochet. But me, I am just, just wanted a nice quick job. So that's why I just chose to do the Reverse slip stitch. Because I find it easy and quick. I didn't want to spend a whole lot of time at this. And if you're using worsted yarn, um, you're not going to get stuck on anything. If you're using four weight, I struggle with getting stuck. So I'm just about back around. And yes, this is a stitch, by the way. I did not make it up just to be a pain in the butt. This is an actual stitch. It actually exists. I know sometimes I can do weird things, but I did not make this stitch up. It exists already. <laughs> but you can do anything you want on the bottom or not do anything at all. It's completely your project, so these are just things that you can do if you want to, but you don't have to. So I'm on my last stitch, if I can get my straggler out of the way. I'm on my last front loop. So you're just going to yarn over like you're casting casting off. Oh my god, I think I'm knitting. Like you're uh, fastening off. Make your knot. But I tied these two together in a really tight double knot. Just to secure it. And it kind of pulls that down a bit. So then I tucked it away once I had the two ends sort of meeting. Do you see what I mean? And then once the tail's on, you don't even notice this. A little well, I mean if you're really looking for it, you will, but and then I just went in and it came out somewhere and it just kinda 
pulls that pulls that right down and then I did the same thing I went up and I just popped out somewhere so that's what it ends up looking like so it's just a little bit of a jog and then I cut that off there so um, we can get his muzzle done you'll need your curry color brown color and your 4.5 you're gonna make a magic ring of six single crochets Um, I need this a little bit pointy, so we're not going to do the regular two single crochets in each stitch. We're going to do a one single crochet increase. And that's only because I need a little bit of a point on this. This will give you nine stitches, so you don't really need a marker, but that's one single crochet. And then your next stitch gets the increase of two single crochets in the same space. And repeat. I'm going to turn my light down a little bit. Seem to be really bright there for some reason. So your next round is going to be two single crochets and an increase. That's number one. That's number two. And then your increase of two single crochets in the same space. Bringing you up to 12 stitches. You can flip this around now. Uh, if you're worried about your nose coming undone, you can tie that in a knot at the back. Um, I'm going to leave it. I'm putting a whole bunch of black yarn there anyway. So your next round is going to be three single crochets and an increase. And this will bring you up to 15 stitches. And then you can do one single crochet in each of these 15 stitches. That's three single crochet and an increase. That is it. That's your muzzle. It's as far as we're going. So you can fasten off. We sew it on open and with a little bit of stuffing. So you'll need a sewing tail. I like to go into this next stitch and pull this through for two reasons. Number one, I like to start sewing from underneath. And number two, when you pull up, it kind of brings this a little more even instead of having that jog in there. So I'm just going to snip that off a little bit. I'm going to leave a tail because I don't want it to come undone. Uh, before we sew this on, so I'm going to sew it on where that's under, like that's going to be under. So it's going to get sewn on like this, but first we need to put a nose on it. So I sewed my nose on. Sewed my nose on my muzzle. You need some black. I'm going to tie a knot on one end. That's going to be on the inside of the nose. You can do this before or after. It's completely up to you. So that's going to be on the bottom. So this is the top.
I probably have way too much yarn. So I'm going to come across and across and then I'm just going to work my way down. This is all I did for the nose. And then I just kind of worked my way. I'm going to get all tangled here. And again, you can use glue to kind of keep it in place because, oops, it may move. And then I just got skinnier as I went down. So that's all I did. I'm going to sew this on and then I'm going to worry about what I just did. So it's going to get sewn on just like that. So right up at the eyes. So I just sew like three quarters of the way around and then put um, stuffing inside. I'm going to stick some stuffing up there. So I am back around. I just put my last stitch in, pretty sure. Oh no, I might have one more. Up here. I get into it, there we go. So I'm just gonna poke out somewhere and weave a couple places here and there a couple times so that is my snout um so as far as this goes. I'm going to do eyebrows and a mouth. So if you're satisfied with your nose, then I'm just going to fix my nose here. I don't feel like my nose is in very good shape. I just want to do Some covering of. Oh, now my nose looks crooked. Now my nose looks crooked. Not sure how I'm going to fix that. So I hope your nose has come out looking way better than my nose. Now I'm just trying to make it look like it's straight. I don't think I can save my nose, but I'm going to go up here and make some eyebrows. So pop out at the top. I don't think my nose is... I don't think I'm going to be able to save my nose. It looks funny. So, um, I, it all depends on how you want your eyebrows to be. I don't want mine to be angry. And then I'm going to come across. I don't know. I'm trying to stay in the same. I don't know. Little tiny eyebrow. 
but it's not exactly above the eye. So I'm going to try to make this not exactly above the eye. And I don't know. Yeah, I don't think that that's even. <laughs> It'll look better with ears right now. It does not. So, um, as far as the mouth goes, you can make your mouth any way that you want to. I'm going to come down into the center down here and I'm going to try to match it up here as far as where it comes out and then I'm going to go back down the center I'm going to come back up here so there's a number of ways you can make your mouth um he's really smiley I don't like that I want my mouth to be just under the nose so, I used glue, <laughs> again. And I know that a lot of you are like, oh, come on, woman. But I want my mouth to be smiley, but I want it to be just under the nose. Like that. It's hard for you to see. That's how I want my mouth to be. But I can't just make it be like that because it won't. So I'm going to put it where I want it and then I'm just going to pop out the back. But I don't feel like my mouth would stay there. Oh, that nose is horrible. Anyway, I didn't use a whole lot of glue. I just did it for the center. Oh, did I actually close that? No, dry it on me again. So I, um, I only used it for the center. So the only thing that I glued is right there. The rest of it just stays. So now I'm just going to snip it off because I've got the glue. I don't really think anyone's going to pull my mouth off. And that's how I did my face. But sadly, I screwed up this nose. I put way too much on, I think. Too much on this nose. But that is how I did my face. So let's do arms and ears and... Well, let's do the tail. Let's get the tail out of the way. And then we'll do the arms and the feet and everything. The tail is super duper quick, so while my glue dries on my mouth, I can make a magic ring and six single crochets. That seems to be my go-to. <laughs> you are going to do one single crochet in each stitch around. So six stitches. This is another way to get a point onto something. So you don't always have to do one single crochet increase. So I'm going to pull my middle closed and then I'm going to attempt to flip it. So I like to stick my thing in here and pull to make sure that middle is really, really closed. Now it's going to look crooked, but it'll not look crooked when we're done. So now I want to do one single crochet and an increase. So that's my one single crochet. I'm going to use this blue one. And an increase of two single crochets in the same space. Now you're still going to have nine stitches. We just did an extra row to get it extra pointy. 
do you think a crush is? And then I want you to do one single crochet in each of those nine stitches. So that's how we're going to proceed throughout the tail. So when I put my screens up, they will consist of two rows on them. I am going to cut this off a bit before it drives me crazy and then I'm just going to poke that down in there. So your next two rounds is going to be two single crochets and an increase which will bring you up to 12 stitches and then one single crochet in each of those 12 stitches. So that's number one. That's number two and then your increase of two single crochets in the same space. Your next round is going to be three single crochets and an increase. This will bring you up to 15 stitches. And then I want you to do one single crochet in each of those 15 stitches. That's three single crochets and then your increase of two single crochets in the same space. So your next few rows, this, well, this row here is going to be four single crochets and an increase and that just brings you up to 18 stitches. And then I want you to do four rows of one single crochet in each of those. That's four single crochets. And then your increase is two single crochets in the same space. So that's my four rows. You can just go into the next stitch, fasten off. You'll need a sewing tail. And again, I'm going to come into the next stitch and I'm going to pull this through. You don't have to, it's just something I do. So. We're going to be putting stuffing in this. Again, I like my stuff at the bottom. So I think right up to his shirt allows him to still... Actually, mine might be a little uh, above his shirt. Hmm. That kind of sucks. Uh, I'm going to stick mine just underneath the shirt. I don't want to sew above the shirt. If that gives you any indication as to what we're doing. So, um, you just got to make sure. That it's in the middle. And then make sure it's not impeding when he's going to be sitting. Now keep in mind there's going to be legs here. So if it doesn't impede his sitting without the legs, it'll be perfectly fine with the legs. Trust me. Trust me. Not a fan of. I just stuck a needle needle in there. So I couldn't reach. Oh, there we go. So. Go ahead and get your tail sewn on. And. Uh, any way that you can. 
do invisible stitches too. Just remember when you get part way around, um, you're going to want to put some stuffing in this. So I'm going to put my stuffing in before I continue. Um, please don't overstuff this because there's really no need. Um, you don't even need to put that much in there, just a wee tiny little bit. So I got a little bit of stuffing in there, but it's pretty squishy. So I'm going to go back down into the doll. So if you pull too tight, you can just pop it back out. And I'm just going to weave a couple of times back and forth in and around. Just for safety, precaution, in case somebody tries to. Oh look, and now that I've got him this way, he's not completely in the center. Which is about typical for my sewing. Yeah, so mine's, mine's not exactly where it's supposed to be. So, hopefully yours came out looking a little better than mine. So, um, with the feet on, it'll make him sit. Right now he's sitting, it looks like he's leaning forwards. But when the feet get on, which are just going to be sewn in right at the front, it'll make him sit more upright. That's why I didn't want a whole lot in the tail. Because you need to push him backwards. So, let's move on. So let's make the inside of the ear. This is what it's going to look like. I've done all my pieces. This is the arm and this is the leg. I will do with you because i got to make second ones. So we're going to do this outside and the inside is done separately and sewn. So let's do the outside. You'll need a magic ring and six single crochets. Your next round is going to be two single crochets in each stitch around, giving you 12 stitches. So I'm just going to count to 12. That's 12. Your next round is going to be one single crochet and an increase. So we'll use our marker here, or you can just count to 18. It's one single crochet, and then the next space gets the increase of two single crochets in the same stitch. This will bring you up to 18 stitches. Your next round is going to be two single crochets and an increase. And this will bring you up to 24 stitches. That's number one. That's number two. And then your increase of two single crochets in the same space.
Your next round is going to be three single crochets and an increase. And this will bring you up to 30 stitches and then we're going to fasten off. So number one. That's three single crochets and then your increase of two single crochets in the same space. So that is it for the outside of the ear. We're going to fasten off. You need a sewing tail for this color. So now you need to get your pink. I'm going to pull this through to the other side like I usually do. Now we need to just find our pink. Get the inside done and easy peasy. So I'm just going to tie this in a, not a tight knot because it'll probably come undone. And I'm going to leave a nubby. Just to kind of, it'll be tucked in behind the pink when we do the inside of the ear. So you can set that aside and grab your pink. The inside of the ear is pretty quick. You're gonna make a magic ring. Oh, what happened to my camera? You're gonna make a magic ring of six single crochets. So it's similar to what we just did, but smaller. So kangaroos kind of have mouse ears. That's why I chose to do it like this. Your next round is going to be two single crochets in each stitch. So again, I'm just going to count to 12, putting two in each of those six stitches. I'm using a four weight. <laughs> I'm going to start getting stuck on everything. That is 12. Your next round is one single crochet and an increase. That's one single crochet. And then your increase of two single crochets in the same space. This will give you 18 stitches. And your last round is two single crochets and an increase, giving you 24 stitches. That's number one. That's number two. And then your increase of two single crochets in the same space. And that is it. We're going to fasten off. You only need a sewing tail to sew to the inside of the ear. So, not a very long one. This thing you can pull tight and make a knot if you wanted. You don't have to. If you do, don't make the knot tight though. The tight knots seem to work themselves loose for some reason. And I always leave it nubby so it's not going to try to work itself loose. So now this gets sewn to the inside of the ear. Like that. So leaving a space. Like you don't, you don't need to push it right down. So all I did was take a piece of ear and take a piece of of uh, ear, <laughs> so a piece of ear and a stitch from the other ear. That's all I did, and I just went all the way around. 
So basically a whip stitch. So I'm all the way back around. Um, I didn't really weave a whole lot. I just kind of went in behind and uh, back and forth a couple of times, but I didn't think it was that big of a deal. I I don't think anyone's going to be grabbing at your ear and trying, but I mean, it depends on if you're giving this to a child that's known for destroying stuffed animals, then by all means, you're going to have to probably tie a knot, tuck it away. Um, that is your ear. So go ahead and make your set. So it's concave like this. It's actually quite difficult to sew to the head. But go ahead and make your second ear. And I'm going to start sewing mine to the head. And um, I'll meet you back here. So I sew on mine because they're fairly large right off the side because that's what it's going to look like because they're pretty big ears compared to him but of course they're cartoonish characters so we want to exaggerate a little bit but that's that's the idea right there so above the eye but on the side above the eye not like that above the eye so it's not easy to sew on I'm not going to do this on camera I'm just going to try to kind of show you so I just did a regular whip stitch at the front so I did a regular whip stitch and then when I went around to the back I, I folded it over and I did a mattress stitch so I picked up one picked up one picked up one and it's pretty secure I mean it does wobble but I got the glue in there so it's drying and I did tie a knot when I was done and I poked it into his head I pulled a little tight there but that is how I sewed that ear on so ears are difficult and I do not sew and I'm not here to teach you to sew but I thought I'd just let you know how I did it, but I'm not a sewer, so <laughs> um, sew your ears on, I'll meet you back here, and we'll get the legs and arms done, and we'll finish this little wee guy. So, those are my ears. <laughs> they might actually be even for a change. Look at that. I might be getting better at sewing. Anyway, let's move on. I'm all proud of myself. I, I suck at sewing. If you're new to my channel, You'll watch more videos. I'm <laughs> not, not good at sewing. So, uh, let's do the arm because it's got blue on it. So, because I wanted to give him, and like I gave him sleeves, short sleeves. Because he's wearing a short sleeve shirt, so. Start with the brown. Get my stitch mark out of the way. So, um, this is quick and easy, however, you're going to need your roll counter for this one. So, we're going to start with a magic ring of eight single crochets. Ha ha ha! Tricked you, didn't I? thought I was going to say six. That's my eight. So, for the next nine rows, you're going to put one single crochet in each stitch. 
easy peasy and then we're going to switch to blue so that is it easy as can be I'll see you near the end of row nine So I'm on my last row. Um, I have to add my blue. I have to change to blue after this row. So I'm going to start weaving in my blue. You don't have to do this. But I prefer to do my color changes like this. So, well, that's my number eight. So, <laughs> let's pay attention. I'm not paying attention to myself. So, because this is my number eight, I pulled through and pulled up a loop. But I'm going to finish this stitch with my blue because that's the next. That's the next round. That's the next color. The next stitch. Wow. I should go back to bed. Now with blue, you're going to do the exact same thing. We're not increasing or decreasing or doing anything. We're just one single crochet in each stitch. Now for the next five rows with your blue. So it's still eight stitches. Make sure I'm going into the right stitch. So now I'm just going to weave in my brown a little bit. And then I'll just cut him off entirely. So I'm going to cut my brown and we're not going back to that and that's my first row. So five rows of the blue stuff as you go and I will see you on the other side. So that is my eight. I haven't stuffed mine yet. I just did my five rows. I shouldn't have said that's my eight. That I mean, I was counting around eight. Let me move my coffee before I spill it. So you need a sewing tail. Speaking of coffee, you can now buy me a coffee to help support my channel if you'd like. It's like five dollars. I love coffee. I drink it all the time. There's a link below and if you don't want to buy me a coffee there's actually patterns down there that you can buy too for a few dollars. They're not expensive. So go ahead and make your second arm. Make sure when you stuff it, you stuff it the same. And I'll see you. Um, I'm going to sew one on and then I'll, I'll meet you back here and show you how I'm going to sew the other one on. So I got my one arm done. That's how it's going to be sewn on, right at the neck. And my other arm. So we need to whip stitch the top shut. So from this point, this is where we fastened off and did our knot. But if we start whip stitching, we're going to have a big bump here. So I want you to first go through this first stitch. Pull that through and then we're going to squeeze this till our stitches line up go through the other stitch and now we can start whip stitching so uh, a whip stitch generally is back loop to back loop but we'll just go through all of them it, we don't need to be that picky so 
just a few stitches will do it and then um, I did invisible stitches to sew it to him so I just make sure your arms are going to be in the same spot so I go in and I grab a little bit of the mouse and I go up into the arm so when I pull that's going to get sucked in underneath so again I'm going to grab a little bit of the mouse doesn't matter if you're grabbing the brown or the blue go up into the arm pull up one more time go grab a little bit of the mouse sorry it's probably hard to see it is hard to see when I'm trying to do it on camera So, um, I have a corner left, but instead of doing an invisible whip stitch, I'm just going to go down into that corner, and I'm going to come out over here, and I'm going to pull. So that kind of rounds the corner off, so it's not such a sharp square, because when we did the whip stitch, it kind of squares it up a little bit. And I'm going to go down into this corner, and I'm going to go this way. And it does the same thing. It will. I'm just going to give it a little pinch and a little tug. And it will round the shoulders off. So that it doesn't, uh, doesn't look like a square arm is hanging there. I could probably have moved that up higher. But doing it on camera is always, always something goes wrong. But I got my ears even. So <laughs> anyway, I'm going to tie a knot. So I'm going to scooch my knot all the way down and this is going to, theory is, if somebody tries to rip my arm off, this knot's going to get lodged in the stuffing and you won't be able to tear the arm completely off and then just poke it down. There we go. Last but not least. Now if you want his arms to stay down like this and not pop up, then you can you can starch them and then pin them in place and it should work a little bit, not entirely, but it should work a little bit. So legs is all we have left and it's a short little guy like this. So doesn't take long at all we're gonna do a magic ring of six single crochets we're gonna do a one single crochet increase I don't know why I just said it like that So that's one single crochet. Don't really need a marker. We're only going to do this two times. One single or three times. One single crochet increase. So that's two stitches and one stitch. Wow, I said that really wrong. I think you know by now what a one single crochet increase is. Because apparently I forgot how to talk. So this will give it a little bit of a point but I mean not not much it's not gonna be pointy or anything and that is it for the next nine rows you're just gonna put one single crochet in these nine stitches nine stitches for nine rows so I don't use a marker I just count to nine or 18 or 27 you know and then I just I make my count on my row marker so Nine stitches, nine rows, and I will see you on the other side. So I am done my nine rows. Just gonna stuff it a bit. 
I'm going to go in and fasten off with a sewing tail. So I'll go in and pull this through. Or you can do it with your needle like we did with the arms. It doesn't matter. I'm going to finish my stuffing. All right. So, uh, I'm going to whip stitch the top just like I did with the arms. And I'm going to sew this guy on. And you can go and make your second leg, and I will meet you right back here. So I've got one of mine sewn on. Um, I sew mine on a little bit differently than I used to. Because I hate, I hate when you pick up a doll and the leg flops down. So you don't have to sew the leg on like I'm going to. But I absolutely hate when the leg flops down because it looks horrible. I think it just looks rotten. So I haven't gone through my stitch yet. I'm going to go through my stitch. I'm going to whip stitch the top. I'm not prepared. Hopefully you've already done this, and now you're just waiting for me. So, once you get your, you just need to decide um, where you're putting your legs, how you want your doll to sit. So put your legs underneath him, and then figure out where you want him. Mine, that's my magic, this is my magic, or it's not my magic ring, because I did that from the top of the head. But this is where I finished my cinch. I'm literally like just a row up. So that's where I'm going to put my other leg. And I'm going to put him like that. Like really close. Oops. So it helps if I'm on camera. So I'm going to put my legs like that. Like I did my other one. So I need to turn it over. I can't do it from that angle so just make sure you're in the same spot and I just did invisible stitches so I just went down it's just exact same thing I did with the arm exact same thing even going down the corners and moving over and I did the exact same thing Um, so I got the corner. I'm going to go down into the corner and I'm going to shoot out over here. Just to pull that corner down and this way to round it off a little bit. And then I'm going to come back up near the other corner, but not into it. So I'm just moving my yarn at this point, I'm not sewing. I'm going to go down into this corner. I'm going to shoot this way. Squeeze and pull, so you want that to be not so square on the bottom. So, their legs usually fall down like that when you pick them up, and I absolutely, absolutely hate that. So you don't need to do this, but I'm going back down in the same hole because I'm just moving my yarn. I'm going to come up a little higher in the leg. Pull too hard. And I'm going to make a couple of stitches up here. So it holds, if I can, it holds that leg up. So I, did, I don't, I don't want to go too high. So it's just still near the bottom. It's just um, a couple stitches to hold his leg up so it doesn't fall down. And that is what I, so I, when I pick them up, his legs don't move. They don't fall down and flop down and it, so it looks horrible. Somehow I broke my nail doing that. So I tie my knot. 
I know I'm not here to teach you how to sew. But it's helpful if there's people out there like me that don't know how to sew. So anyway, tie your knot and then poke, poke it down into his bum bum. And there we go. There we go, baby Roo. Little baby Roo. We oh, got two baby Roos. This guy's arms keep wanting to come out. Anyway, that is it, guys. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you in the next video. Super cute.